how much fight was in the swamp fight? How much swamp was in the swamp fight? And did a man's eyeball come out of his head? Well, let's talk about this uh, from my notes and Extreme Rules, the horror show or the horror show at Extreme Rules. So let's start as as usual. We always start with we, go, we don't bury the lead here. We go straight into the main event first. Uh, Bray Wyatt versus Braun Strowman in the cinematic swamp fight. Uh, the match was mostly promo, so there was a lot of talking. There was not a lot of action. There was a lot of talking. Some some interesting things happened, but a lot of stuff that really kind of they could have just done on the road to SmackDown on, to, on the road to this match or whatever. So. Um, uh, Bray Wyatt, you know, did some disappearing acts. Braun Strowman beat up some goons. Braun was uh, chained to a chair while Bray Wyatt gave his sermon, basically trying to entice Braun to come back to him. Uh, Braun, of course, refused. Then Braun was bit by a snake. And then he was released back out into the wild where he fought some more goons. And then he started to hallucinate and he started seeing Alexa Bliss. And Alexa Bliss is telling him, come home, Bron. You know, you want to be with me. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, um, okay. That, that part was interesting. Like the temptress, the siren. I like that. I like that part. And it was just, of course, an illusion. So that Bray Wyatt could actually get to the fight part of the swamp fight. Uh, so, you know, uh, Wyatt went straight for the eyes. You know, they, it wasn't a lot done. It was kind of like. Uh, Wyatt would get a, a small advantage. Braun would hit him, choke slam him or something. And then Wyatt would disappear. Braun would walk around, you know, in, in the creepy, creepy swamp. He was, you know, waist deep in the water, looking in the boat and everything. He get attacked from behind uh, by Bray Wyatt with an oar. He gets drowned. And then he survives and he comes back and him and Bray fight some more. And then he kicks Bray into the water again after they climbed out of the water. Uh, he kicks Bray into the water again and he thinks Bray's dead and th there's a false finish. Believe it or not, there's actually a false finish where the, where the little logo appears, the extreme rules logo appears at the bottom of the bottom right of the screen. And then Bray Wyatt, you know, reappears and you know, mandible claw pulls Braun into the water. There's some struggling then it motion. Then the fiend, um, emerges and I, I get what they were trying to do. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that Braun was attacked by Braun. He was attacked by Braun twice. So <laughs> I don't I don't understand how I could forget the most surreal part of it is that after Braun beat up the goons, he got hit in the back with a shovel. And that's when he came face. You know, he while he was on the ground. Uh, Wyatt family Braun, which is obviously in, in the in the black sheet mask. Is standing above him, hit him again, knocked him out, and that's how he ended up in chains and everything. And then he also got attacked by uh, Wyatt family Braun again, I think, a little bit later. But it was absolutely crazy. It was a lot of uh, a lot of callbacks, um, a lot of history with Braun Strowman. It's basically basically a stroll through memory lane, where um, Braun is, you know, uh, absorbing this, this spooky atmosphere, and Wyatt is again tempting him to come home, you know. Uh, tempting him to try to get him to stay, but I would have liked more fights in my swamp fight, and there was not a lot of fight in this at all. Uh, was it was it goofy? Was it silly? Yes, it was a lot of that because it had a lot of obviously Braun can't attack Braun. That doesn't that doesn't make much sense. But uh, of course, when you're in the cinematic universe, you kind of have to unchain from the rest of the <laughs> from the rest of the wrestling. I really 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 liked the Alexa Bliss angle. I love that. I think that that's something they could play into similar to the Otis and Mandy Rose storyline. That could be something they could really play into down the line. And maybe Braun Strowman does have some kind of secret feelings for Alexa Bliss. And I, I, I like that. I like that angle. Um, but the rest of this, I, I don't really need the rest of this stuff, you know. And it was it was a little over the top. And it was way too much talking, not enough fighting in my swamp fight. They need to do more of that. But it's worth watching again. I'm in this is, again, I make all of my notes videos off of one watch. I don't cheat and uh watch it multiple times so I can explain everything in it. Cause um I feel like people actually uh if you get the raw emotion, the raw off the first feeling, then everybody can be in together. Like, yeah, this is kind of what I saw in the match. This is what I saw as opposed to me sitting down and studying the fucking match. I mean, there's no, there's no, there's no benefit to that. Um, but, uh, so the WWE championship, Dolph Ziggler versus Drew McIntyre in a 
extreme rules for Dolph only match. So Dolph had no pin. Well, Dolph could win by submission, pinfall. He could use weapons. But if uh, Drew McIntyre got disqualified or counted out, he would lose the title. It's actually a pretty good match. It reminded me somewhat of the uh, of the Randy Orton Shawn Michaels match from Survivor Series 07, I think, where the the super kick was banned. So Shawn had to use other different way. Had you know, there was a different kind of story that needed to be told. Where Randy is now, he doesn't have to worry about the super kick so much. So he can start doing a little bit more, th- you know, doing you know different things. But this is, of course, a lot different than that because Dolph can use weapons, Drew can't. So the story of the match essentially is uh, Drew is dominant. He's throwing uh, Dolph all over the place, and he got to play goalie because he can't just. It's not just him. He got to pin um, Dolph or make Dolph submit, but he also has to prevent Dolph from getting weapons. So, you know, he kind of failed at that <laughs> and Dolph kind of beat him up with some weapons after he kicked him in the balls because, again, it's no rules for Dolph Ziggler, rules for um, Drew McIntyre. And they, they started digging the hole, you know, and that's kind of how it is. When, you, when, you, when you're when doing storytelling, you dig, the, you, you put the hero in a hole. And this this story, obviously, is you put uh, McIntyre in the hole off rip because it's a, well, um, no disqualification for one person. But he was still being dominant up to this point. So it didn't matter, <laughs> you know, because Dolph couldn't hit him with anything. It didn't hit him with anything. He was just on top of Dolph beating his ass. And then after he kicked him in the balls, you know, Dolph started introducing the chairs and in- introducing different weapons to make it to make him more of a threat. And that's where he was digging the hole. Like, OK, Dolph is, you know, um, really hitting him with some with some good shit. That was a running fame master off the uh, off the uh, announce table onto the floor. It was a really good spot. Dolph did a good job of, of really devolving into the match, where it he's, he he had this attitude like it was supposed to be easy, and when it when McIntyre kept fighting back and kept getting back up, he started getting a little bit crazier and crazier. Uh, when Dolph, you know, when McIntyre was kicking out of his finish and McIntyre survived his sleeper, which is actually one of Dolph's finishers, and like, you know, he doesn't use it that often, but um. One of Dolph's old finishers in like 2009, 2010 was actually a sleeper. And um, McIntyre sort of survived the sleeper. He survived uh, multiple zigzags. And then, you know, there was the the big spot where, you know, um, Dolph chained all these moves together, which was the Fame Master. And then, you know, McIntyre got up. He hit him with the zigzag. And then he did a rock bottom onto a chair. And McIntyre still kicked out. And then that's when Dolph kind of snapped, you know, and he was just kind of like, you know, why won't you die? And he started, he started, you know, kind of uh, looking to do the sweet chain music, you know, the Shawn Michaels finish. And uh, McIntyre caught him with a Claymore, you know, he kind of kipped up. So it's kind of like he was no selling a little bit, which I didn't, I didn't care for that. But the match itself was pretty damn good. It was a pretty damn good match. They told a good story. Um, I'm really concerned. I'm really con- thinking about where they go with Drew McIntyre now that um, he's beaten Dolph and he's beaten them pretty convincingly because this match is as convincing as it gets when you have one set of rules for one person and another set of rules for somebody else. But it was a real, it was a well worked match. Dolph told a hell of a story. Boys had a hell of a match. It was pretty good. But the match of the night, with the exception of the finish, was Oscar versus Sasha Banks. This match was fucking badass, man. Uh, they went in there and they, they, the thing about women's wrestling that is, that is making it shine over the men is that the women are keeping it simple. They, they locked up. They were aggressive. They told the story verbally. They told the story physically. You had, you know, there was a desperation on both ends where Sasuke, you know, there was a part of the match where Sasha Banks was like, I have to be the champion. And I was like, no, I have to be the champion. And they started, you know, hitting each other in the face. And it was a lot of verbal jousting. You know, Asuka was so good at the baby face as far as, you know, firing back when, when Sasha had the, uh, when Sasha had the, when Sasha was on top, she was, she really did a good job of firing back. This is what I mean when you say baby face have to show fire. Asuka was, fantastic in that role and Sasha was a good vicious heel as far as working you know she hit the arm on the uh on the ring post and then she started working the finger locks kind of like Pete Dunne or uh you know what Timothy Thatcher would do she worked submissions you know after she injured uh, Asuka's arm 
And it was a lot, there was a lot of counters, a lot of roll-ups, a lot of good false finishes. It was really good until Bailey interfered. And then shit went off the rails because Bailey tosses the, you know, Bailey takes out Kyrie Sane first. And then Bailey tosses a belt in the ring. Uh, there seemed to be some kind of miscommunication because she tossed the belt in the ring right in front of the ref. The ref picks the belt up, goes to put the belt back. Bailey gets in the ring. Uh, Bailey is confronted by the referee or uh, she's confronted by Asuka. I forget who. And she stopped and she's like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. She drops the other tag team title. Sasha picks the tag team title up. The referee sees Sasha Banks with the tag team title. Asuka is creeping up behind Sasha Banks while Sasha is arguing with the ref about the belt. Asuka spits her mist. Sasha ducks. The ref gets sprayed. The referee is on the ground. Then Bailey hits Asuka with the title, with one of them titles. I, I, they have so many, I don't remember. And then... Bailey puts Sasha Banks on top of Asuka. Then Bailey takes off the referee's shirt, puts it on, then counts to three, and then claims that that three count is valid. And they take the Raw Women's title and they leave. Bullshit. Okay? There's absolute, for starters, so what is this? Is this no disqualification? You know, it, well, it can't be no disqualification. What I mean is, is that a disqualification or is it just plain non finish? Obviously, for people who are confused, obviously, Sasha Banks is not the Raw Women's Champion. It was not a legal three count. That's nonsense. So why did they do this? <laughs> why did, again, maybe just to kick the can down the road, maybe they're going to do it again. Maybe there's going to be an evolution too. Maybe they're going to do it again at SummerSlam, not that, that Bailey and Sasha Banks can't, uh, can't really do it because there won't be a crowd. Uh, who knows? But they really, really ruined a fantastic fucking match with some bullshit ending. Like, that bullshit, that ending was bullshit. <laughs> it was absolute bullshit. And I'm sort of confused that so many people are are confused by it. I'm like, obviously, Bailey is not a referee, so how could this count? That That's for you to think that it counts is, is, is nonsense. Okay, so uh, match... Uh, well, eye for an eye. Seth Rollins versus Rey Mysterio. This match was the match everybody was looking forward to because they knew it was going to be some hokey shit. And these two guys went out there and they did a really good match. Uh, the storytelling was right, was right there, right where it needed to be. As far as they, of course, they were going after each other's eye. But they kept finding like unique ways of going after each other. Like Seth Rollins was trying to stab Ray with anything he can get his hands on. He brought a pair of pliers to the ring, you know. <laughs> so, you know, there's a kendo stick, there's a leg of a chair. He's trying, he's trying to stab him with an ink pen. You know, he tied Ray into the uh, ropes and everything. Now, you know, you don't really have to do too much to to see what the finish was. Um, to people, I've been showing the the scene of Ray's eyeball. <laughs> popped out of his head the obviously uh fake golf ball or whatever and some people are so surprised that it wasn't a real eyeball it's like come on dog but um how they did it you know kind of made sense because it it went the end like another storytelling piece is the end hangs on the beginning the story began with ray's face being shoved into some stairs injuring his eye this match ended with Ray's face being shoved into some stairs and his eyeball popped out. And the referee called for the bell. Uh, Seth Rollins then threw up. I <laughs> he puked. He's gotta, he's gotta be. <laughs> I'm sorry, dog. It was so fucking cheesy. It was so fucking ridiculous. It was exactly what I thought it was gonna be uh, to some degree. It wasn't as goofy as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like a B movie where I thought it was going to be like blood splurting all over the place. Um, before the next match, of course, Charlie Caruso started talking about how they got to attach Ray's blah, blah, blah to his boo, 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 and he'll be okay. And, um, but the match itself was pretty good. Um, I, I like that they didn't really try to overdo it. With the, they didn't make it cinematic. They just kind of did the, uh, 
slip the little slip the little fake eyeball in there. And um, people really had to take screenshots because I didn't see it in the first um, on first watch. Well, I didn't see it <clears throat> as I was watching it because I couldn't like my, my vision is not that good. But I, I did see that the match was over <laughs> and I saw some uh, pictures, people sending pictures and stuff. But the match itself was pretty good, man. It was an interesting match and I wasn't too offended by it. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, uh, tentacles in a trash can. Like it wasn't, it wasn't that. So the United States championship match was canceled because Apollo Crews apparently has the Rona, even though they, uh, they said that his bulging disc from actually being injured by Lashley is why, uh, he couldn't defend the title. So MVP declares himself the United States champion by forfeit, which is technically correct. If the champion cannot defend or is not there, then the number one contender is the champion. The same thing. I mean, it's injury, right? If it's an injury, WWE has to clear this up. Again, it should, probably should be some sort of authority angle. Um, I hate bureaucracy in wrestling, like where you have to have a president or somebody um, explain the rules of what's going on. But in this situation, there should have been an official uh, title change. And then just had Apollo Crews win the title back. But, um, yeah, it really should be a, this, you know, MVP is the U.S. champion by forfeit. But it was nothing officially not announced. So, um, about, uh, MVP is still in in possession of the uh, redesigned United States championship. And all is well, all is right with the world. Even though, even though I'm pretty sure on Raw, they're going to throw that out. Just like they're already going to throw out that Sasha Banks pinfall bullshit. Okay, the SmackDown Women's Championship, Bayley versus Nikki Cross. Um, they did a good job in this match of really putting Nikki Cross over. The match started with uh, Asuka and Alexa Bliss and Kyrie Sane giving Nikki Cross a pep talk where they're, you know, they, they, they're, they're forcing her to do affirmations like, I can beat Bayley. I can beat Bayley. And she got this, like, this really husky accent. And uh, they 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 did they did an interesting thing too where they built up to Nikki Cross's shine. For people who don't know, babyface shine is when the babyface is actually in control of the match and they're over overpowering the heel, which is supposed to be at the beginning of every match that the heel takes a lot of bumps, rolls out of the ring or whatever, and then the heel does some cheap stuff in order to get uh, get the heat and build the heat for the match. They did it in re- in reverse here because the story is Nikki's confidence. And Nikki not being confident in herself, they had uh, Bailey sort of take control early, and then they built up uh, Nikki firing back. And then once Nikki was kind of involved, her her offense was explosive. She was sympathetic. She constantly tried to win. You know, it. it she had a sense of urgency. She felt desperate. It was a lot. It was the same thing with um, Oscar and Sasha Banks. It just felt. And that was really one key thing that I liked in uh, this match, Nikki Cross and Bailey, uh, Sasha Banks and Asuka and Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre, is there was a sense of urgency in every pinfall. There was not a lot of uh, fucking around. It was, I have to win. I must win. You know, and in this match, Nikki Cross wanted to win so bad that you actually did feel bad for her when she got cheated. So what ends up happening is Sasha Banks slipped Asuka, her four-finger ring, the boss four-finger ring. Uh, Bailey then hits Nikki Cross in the stomach. <clears throat> she uses her second finisher, which is the rose plant, and pins Nikki Cross. After This is after Nikki Cross is kicked out of the Bailey to Belly. And there's also some some really good stuff from uh, from Nikki in this match. It was a good match. It wasn't. It was probably third best match of the night. So, you know, but that's not really saying much considering, you know, but actually maybe it's the fourth best match because I'm not sure how I feel about the eye for an eye match. Maybe I have to watch it again, but it's certainly better than a swamp fight. Um, so the first match on the show was the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, which was the New Day versus, Shins- versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro in a tables match for the SmackDown Women, SmackDown Women, SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Um, it was oddly single elimination. Usually tables matches with tag teams are uh, double elimination. It means you have to put both people through the table. This match, you only had to put one. 
Uh, this match was very fast paced. It was very aggressive. Uh, Kofi especially was really aggressive in this match. Really energetic. You know, I don't, I don't know what got into him, but he was he was really good in this match. It was very physical. The the, the teams had good chemistry. Uh, Cesaro power bombed Kofi through a stack tables in order to win. So again, uh, Nakamura and Cesaro Cesaro is like a seven time tag team champion with like five different partners, and so, <laughs> Nakamura continues his yearly belt run. So he gets he every year he gets a belt, man. So um. He was, he's the, they're the new tag team champions and, uh, their gimmick is they basically have stolen the forgotten sons gimmick where they kind of felt like they were being looked over and now they, they want respect. You know, like, well, you know, forgotten no more, you know, they kind of stole the forgotten sons gimmick. It seemed like somebody just, this, this story was, was written for the forgotten sons and they just decided to slide Cesaro and Nakamura instead of saying forgotten, they just add respect. We aren't being respected. So now you have to respect us. So it was good. Top to bottom, the show was decent. Uh, There was, you know, um, there were, of course, some letdowns. You know, the Swamp Fight was a letdown. I'm not sure how I felt about the Eye for an Eye match. I think the the action was good. The work was good. So I I wasn't disappointed in that. Only just that it wasn't, you know, blurred squirting everywhere and, you know, people crying. But (laughs) Seth Rollins puking. (laughs) <laughs> that was that was fucking hilarious <laughs> but uh the women's title match is delivered um i did not i mean the only thing that i could say is the most disappointing thing of all of the whole night was oscar and sasha banks's finish that was disappointing as fuck and it, it was kind of disappointing the swamp fight was disappointing everything else well it was also disappointing i didn't get to see apollo cruz versus mvp but like, what can you do? Guys probably got the Rona. So, uh, how would I, how would I rate the show? I would say it's a C plus show. If Sasha Banks and Oscar would have had a solid finish, it probably would have been a B, B minus show. Um, still would have had the swamp fight, um, fuck everything up. You, uh, but I, I did enjoy Dolph Ziggler and, um, uh, Drew McIntyre and enjoyed most of Oscar and Sasha Banks. I enjoyed Seth Rollins and um, Rey Mysterio to a degree, and I enjoyed Nikki Cross and Bailey. I mean, I enjoyed the show. I didn't hate anything. So let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. If you watched the show, I'm pretty sure you did. Uh, hit me with your comments. Hit me with your debate. What do you think um, is going next? Like, share, and subscribe. I will talk to you later.